Good morning, everybody. It is 9.49, Wednesday, July 14th, 2021. Um, I have my kids today. They've been bribed with cartoons and bananas, so hopefully we can get through this without anything crazy going down. Um, 9.4 or $9.5 trillion asset manager BlackRock CEO's company sees very little demand on crypto assets. Interesting. Um, I find that hard to believe because Bristol, C or Bristol, Brazil's CVM gives nod to Latin America's first Ethereum ETF. Expanding the horizon of diversification becomes a simple, safe, and regulated option for any investor to gain direct exposure to Ethereum through their preferred brokerage. You know, it's getting a little more of a traditional flow to things, I think. Here comes Fidelity Digital Assets launching a hiring spree amid strong interest from institutional investors. Last year was a real breakthrough year for the space given the interest in Bitcoin that accelerated when the pandemic started. We've seen more interest in Ether, so we want to be ahead of that demand. Bitcoin has been the entry for a lot of institutions. It's now really opening up a window on what else is going on in the space. Love to hear it. Paraguay proposed Bitcoin law includes crypto registration report. Hold on. The bill reportedly seeks to regulate ownership and registration of crypto as well as crypto mining operations. The purpose of this draft law is to establish legal certainty, financial and fiscal, and the businesses derived from the production and commercialization of virtual assets is what a rough translation of the document reads. The bill would also regulate crypto mining as well as trading through exchanges and peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces where participants will be required to register as obligated subjects, according to the decrypt reporting. It is a stark contrast to neighboring Latin America country El Salvador, which last month approved its own version of a Bitcoin law designed to make the crypto legal tender alongside the dollar. It is important that companies can register these products within their accounting so that they can have their real valuation. Additionally, it helps to optimize the tax collection of this industry, finally giving traceability of what is produced in the countries, facilitating its tracking by supervisory authorities. I'm telling you guys, regulatory clarity is coming whether you like it or not. Three more Chinese provinces shutter down or shutter crypto mines as clampdown continues. Um, you know. They're doing the whole clean up and shut down. You know the whole thing that's going on with them, right? Well, <clears throat> what's interesting about it is you go over here and you find out that almost all Chinese provinces have blockchain boosting policies. We just talked about some of the law enforcement stuff and the other things that they're using it for in a, in a video a couple of days ago. And to me, I think it just pr it just really speaks on the amount of control they want to maintain. And then the fact that I think a lot of people are just finally ready to admit that proof of work does not work um the amount of energy i don't care how you justify wasted energy this that and the other i don't really care um it just if you can have a software or, or something like this that runs and doesn't require that why would you not use it so yeah i think this all kind of speaks to a larger narrative than it might seem on face value um got an old power plant lying around crypto miners are buying them up They'll take denim mills, airplane hangers, aluminum smelters too. This is a World War II era airplane hangar in Texas has been converted into a Bitcoin mining facility. Interesting. I mean, this stuff's still moving pretty heavy, guys. I mean, I think it's going to set up in North America in a big way. Um, I think China has probably hurt themselves with this, whether they know it or not. But then again, who knows what China's got up their sleeve. Bitcoin Mining Corporation strikes deal to use nuclear energy to operate in Ohio. Energy Harbor Corp signed a five-year agreement with Standard Power to launch an environmentally friendly Bitcoin operation in Ohio. Nuclear power for the Bitcoin mining industry, the quest for a greener Bitcoin, you know, the narrative's still hammering pretty hard as far as the sustainability and the climate thing. That comes from the, the World Bank and the G7 and all those people, World Economic Forum, you know, everybody all the way down. It's sustainability, sustainability, energy, energy, energy. Um... Black Swan author says Bitcoin is worth zero and fails as a currency and a hedge. Now keep in mind, this guy was once a major bull. And he says, fewer assets in financial history have been more fragile than Bitcoin. He called it the first organic currency in the forward of the Bitcoin standard in 2018 and an insurance policy against government control over currency. In his recent paper, Bitcoin Currencies and Fragility... He says the Bitcoin is worth exactly zero, partly because it requires a sustained amount of interest to maintain it. He talks about how big or volatility is a key characteristic of the asset. And, you know, that's all pretty, uh, pretty accurate.
So yeah, this kind of leans into a similar thing. He talks about Bitcoin being backed by nothing, but this capital, uh, Unchained Capital's Parker Lewis, excuse me, I don't know why I read that all crazy. He talks about why he believes Bitcoin has value, and it's some interesting stuff. He's like, you know, they say Bitcoin's not backed by anything, but they don't understand the principle because they say the dollar is backed by the government. What's it really backed by? You know, they're printing all this money. Um, the mechanics in place that allow for Bitcoin to credibly enforce a 21 million supply to have achieved financial scarcity are the very things that give it attractive monetary property. When people don't realize if the network came together, and I don't know what the percentage is required, but I am pretty sure the Bitcoin network would still allow for the further expansion of the asset if the like majority of the network agreed on it. I don't know what the numbers are, and don't quote me on that. You might want to look it up, but I'm pretty sure I have read that. Um, leaning into what they're saying i just think that the reason why bitcoin maintains value is because people say it does and i think that applies to a lot of assets especially the ones that don't have any real utility i know store of value is now a thing and i'm fine with that but it's that's not utility you know it's not a real use case it is more speculative than anything in my opinion um let's go over here to squat box and you can hear what uh i believe this is mnuchin had to say about bitcoin ransomware or money laundering notwithstanding and and I, you know I don't know what Gary Gens the regulation actually looks like but has your viewpoint on Bitcoin uh, evolved at all given when we had you on I don't know year year and a half ago and we're very uh, almost dismissive I mean you've seen some of the giants in uh, in finance uh, sort of come around after a while some of the great traders some of the great investors uh, a lot of companies. I mean, has it, it, it have, has it evolved at all, or, or you're still a no Bitcoin, never type, type of no inherent value kind of guy? Well, I, I think my, my view has evolved a little bit, but it, it is pretty consistent, which the, the, the first part of it is, I think the underlying technology of blockchain is really incredible and has lots of, uh, lo lots of different things, particularly in fintech and finance. I think as it relates to Bitcoin, if people want to buy Bitcoin as a substitute, no different than buying gold or some other asset, it's fine. I, I'm, I, I don't personally want to have it in, in my portfolio, but if people want to do, I think that's perfectly fine. But I do think it's very important that this is an asset that has complete BSA and regulatory compliance. And matter of fact, uh, under the OCC last year, we approved that banks could custodian it, and the reason we did that is because we wanted to make sure that this was becoming in the regulated world. So my real focus is people want to buy it. That's fine. Uh, some people will think it'll go up. Some people will think it'll go down. But it should be in the regulated world and it should be fully BSA compliant. Well, it sounds like you're still. Ran so there you have it. Um, this is what I thought was really interesting. What could have activated the Satoshi era Bitcoin wallet? So this, uh, according to Whale Alert, the wallet has been activated after 9.1 years, had had no, uh, no action, had almost 800 Bitcoin, which is $26 million, basically. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. So Satoshi era Bitcoin is referred to those wallets which coins had mined when the creator of Bitcoin Satoshi was still communicating with the crypto world. However, no one has heard from Satoshi since his last message, although there were many claiming to be him. It's David Schwartz, guys. Not financial advice. Wild speculation. Shout out to DAI for that. Um, so yeah, I just thought this was really cool. And what could have activated it? Maybe it's because this is happening. 10 times user growth in sight by 2020 for emerging crypto sector, says Venture Capital Head. I'm all about this. Um, it says by the end of the year, the number of DeFi users could multiply between 5 to 10 times pending scaling solutions. It's really all about scaling. I think we've seen the success of Polygon, Binance Smart Chain. Um, I think more scaling solutions will just help Ethereum to scale and more DeFi apps to be able to onboard more users. I think the DeFi protocols on Ethereum definitely have crossed 1 million users over time. Um, I'm looking forward to crossing the 5 to 10 million probably by the end of the year. I think it's possible if we have a successful scaling solution. I mean, that's awesome, man. They're, he's, they're saying that he predicts there will be 80 to 100 billion in total value locked in default DeFi protocols excluding Binance Smart Chain. I mean, that's awesome. Man. I'm, I'm all about it, man. DeFi, I think, could be a lot bigger than just crypto. 
Uh, the ECB moves to start the Digital Euro Project. They have been discussing the potential launch of a Eurozone CBDC since the beginning of the year. A digital euro would be the means to complement cash and not replace it, they have stressed. Research by the Central Bank highlighted a drop in the uses of cash since 2019 with the C-19 pandemic attributable for an acceleration in the long-term decline. So, the move from discussion to exploration is one that numerous other central banks, including those of the UK and Japan, have made in the past year. Among major economies, China leads the way in the advancement of CBDC plans. South Korea and Sweden both appear to have moved from exploration to testing in recent months. You know, it's coming, guys. I still think as, a, as an American citizen, I just know how our government works and stuff. I think we're about to leapfrog this whole thing. And just, I don't know if it's USDC and Circle that somehow becomes Fed coin, or if it really is just... Something that's going to come out of like MIT or something crazy, but I think I think it's coming down soon. Uh, the UAE central bank unveils its plan to launch its digital currency. Uh, it is a, a part of its strategy, so it's going to launch between 23 and 26, and it's part of a strategy to become one of the world's top 10 central banks. So they think that by issuing a central bank digital currency now, it puts them in line to become a top 10 central bank. So that tells you what the central banks, how they're really looking at it as to what it is. You know, it's um, that's that's a bold statement right there. I, I didn't read that when I first saw it. Another thing I thought was interesting, I saw DAI posted that BNY Mellon has definitely been activated. And then I saw this. They have partnered with Grayscale to service the Grayscale uh, BTC trust and it's Bitcoin ETF. I think that's what the GBTC is anyway. Um, what I fa also found interesting about that is now Grayscale has registered a large cap crypto fund with the SEC. So what's really interesting to me about that, it has announced it's filing three additional registration statements via the same form, Grayscale Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, and Litecoin Trust. The company already has two SEC reporting products, it's Bitcoin and Ethereum. So the large digital cap fund grants access to a range of different assets under one product. As of July 9th, the components of the fund. So these, these are all now registered with the SEC. This is the point I'm trying to make. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Chainlink. Now that doesn't mean that they, they have given these a pass. Well, we know, we know that some of these have always gotten a pass. But that doesn't mean that the SEC can't still come after these tomorrow in all reality. But I do find it interesting that when you're dealing with BNY Mellon and you're dealing with Grayscale, that means you're also dealing with State Street, uh, who, you know what I mean, Standard, uh, uh, Goldman, JP Morgan. They all own each other. You can, I showed it in a video a while back. The top 10 owners of all those companies is pretty much each other. So, yeah. I have a hard time believing that these have anything to worry about once I see this. But as far as the SEC goes, I'll just leave that at that. Um, speaking of the SEC, Gary Gensler has finally made an appearance. Um, they have charged SPAC, sponsor, merger target, and CEOs for misleading disclosures ahead of a proposed business combination. Um, this case illustrates risk inherent to SPAC transactions as those who stand to earn significant profits from a SPAC merger may conduct inadequate due diligence and mislead investors. If that's the case, I think that should that's pretty awesome that they caught that. This was in regards to a planned merger of Stable Road Acquisition Company and a Space Transportation Company, Momentus. Um, I don't know much about that. I just saw that Gary was firing one off this morning and figured I'd include it in the video. Um, Binance has suspended sterling withdrawals following partner exit. Uh, you know, their woes continue amid regulatory crackdown. So, man, that's that's rough. They have suspended withdrawals and sterling again after one of the key partners terminated its agreements with the firm. It has told the UK customers that bank withdrawals via the Faster Payments Network have been temporarily suspended but provided zero details on the change. We are working to resume service as soon as we can. And that is all they have said. So who knows? They could uh, they could resume. That could be temporary. Who knows? And if, if it's not, you know what? Get on board onto another asset. XRP works great. It's fast and it's cheap. And ship it somewhere and you know withdraw from there. There's got to be a way around this, I would think. Maybe not. I don't know what your guys' regulations like over there. And keep in mind, this is not Binance US. Binance US is its own entity that bought into some of the proprietary technology and the brand more than anything. Totally different companies in totally different areas of the world. Crypto crackdown targeting USD access points has begun. 
Avanti's Caitlin Long expects the U.S. Federal Reserve to make it harder for crypto companies to access USD payment channels. The issue isn't Bitcoin, Ethereum, or other crypto protocols. They're just fine. The risk comes from the bank's operational process. It didn't matter whether the biz was legit or scam. We all were debanked. She emphasized the importance of ensuring crypto firms are able to gain direct access to master accounts with the Federal Reserve, citing an example from 2017 when a number of banks carried out mass closures of bank accounts connected with crypto, and that's what she had to say about it. Um... Interesting stuff. I don't. I don't think this is like the same thing as what I was saying about Binance here. But I think this is saying that for the crypto companies accessing banks and stuff like that, this is what what she's pointing at. Uh, Bitcoin ransomware group Revel, or I guess that's how you say it, goes offline after Biden ultimatum. Just a week after demanding seven million dollars for attacking two hundred plus companies, they have disappeared off the dark web. We'll see what happens with that. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to speculate in my opinion. I think that this whole line right here is propaganda though. I will tell you that. And maybe it is, but they know what they're doing by constantly. And then bringing this into, I don't know. There's something going on there. Nifty news. Muse frontman drops track as NFT. Chimps create NFTs and more. Um, an exclusive share with Cointelegraph celebrity focused NFT auction platform Cryptograph has announced the launch of an exclusive track for Moose frontman uh, Matt Bellamy in the form of a non-fungible token. The token will be issued to accompany the launch of his new 10-track solo album Cryosleep on July 16th which was recorded on the same guitar Jeff Buckley used for his hit album Grace. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, IOTA launched an almost feeless NFT marketplace. It's an extraordinary expensive fees associated with minting, buying, trading, and transactions on the blockchain have hampered the NFT sector. I agree with that. Ethereum really, when the market was bogged down, it was just really crushing what people were able to do. Um, so it's pretty cool. And here's Chimps minting NFTs. A nonprofit sanctuary Save the Chimps has launched an NFT drop featuring tokenized depictions of paintings created by three rescued chimps. The drop is dubbed Primal Expressions and includes four tokenized paintings from chimp artists Cheetah, Clay, and Tootie. Shout out to them. <laughs> the paintings contain an ensemble of various colors and different stroke techniques with one painting resembling the shape of an alpaca. What's that going to sell for? Uh, new Nifty Metaverse dub Nifty Island is coming soon, promising to serve as a community-first gaming platform for the NFT... I mean, just the NFT thing. I got to start covering some of this stuff more, man. If you haven't seen like uh, Decentraland and some of these other ones or like Metaverses, you can walk around. They got all kinds of stuff going on. I mean, it's pretty crazy. I think the VR thing is going to get crazy too. Now, here's Band Royalty. I covered them a while back. Brad Kimes had talked about them over on Digital Perspectives. And dude, these are really cool. Um, I'm not going to cover it too in depth because it's a lot of information. This video is already kind of long. But if you watch it, you can buy the NFT, right? To one of these songs. They got, you know, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Tim, Justin Timberlake, Cher, Will I Am, Timberland, Rihanna, Missy Elliott, you see it. Um, so what's crazy is you can you gain access to all royalties on all 50 songs when you stake your band NFT. So you can buy an NFT that is attached to these songs. And then when okay, so here we go. Tap in the unique utility of band royalty NFTs and secure the limited opportunity for a slice of the performance rights to platinum selling artists. Imagine sharing in 50% of the royalty income streams each time a platinum song in our band catalog is performed. None of these artists are directly affiliated with band royalty beyond our ownership of the performance royalties in our band catalog. Below are four of the artists performing songs from our catalog. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, man. You know, every time it gets played, you're getting some sort of kickback when you're staked in there. Um... You know, and here's some information on it. Just check it out. I, I think it's really cool because some of this this NFT stuff is going to put a lot of the power back into the artists. Yeah, you can stake it here. Publishing royalties, uh, mechanical and public performance royalties, and then a music synchronization royalty. So that's pretty cool. I didn't realize they had different pools too. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted because I didn't realize. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna come back and look at this in a little later. Um. But yeah, they got this going on their roadmap. I don't. The website's acting kind of crazy. So anyway, let me get off here. Another thing that's going on, Kava.io, my favorite DeFi platform by far. I love it. 
What is interesting, they are getting ready to release Kava Swap, and I saw here today Kava Swap Testnet Competition. $100,000 prize pool. I will be entering this 1,000%. Um, if you guys are into DeFi or if you want to learn anything about it, this could be a really cool way to get involved. Um, usually these testnet competitions, usually you're giving out some tokens or something to roll with, and uh, it's usually free. So, you know, it could be an awesome opportunity. I will may probably make a video covering all of that as I work through it and do all that as long as I can get registered. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and then here's the total altcoin market cap. I just want to talk about it, guys. So, so just to explain this, this is a Fibonacci retracement level. And I just pulled it from like the last little rally before, you know, totally capitulated and crashed out. Um, here is our all time high here. Uh, this is just showing your retracement levels on the Fibonacci. So like you'll see there's a lots of price action that happens in this. I'm not going to give like a charting lesson because I'm not a charting guy. But that's what this is. These are daily candles on this chart, which is what I look at the most. And then this is the area between the 702 and the um, 618 retracement levels of the main structure coming from the all-time high. The reason I have that marked out, BC Backer, somebody I follow, and I'm not saying that this is the method he uses, but he uses some of these tools and this to very wide and broad understanding of what he has nothing super concentrated at all that is what led me to use this and it is interesting you can see at these lines all the price actions hit and when i went to bed last night the market was not looking good um you know i'm not a panic guy but it, i definitely wasn't comfortable going to bed it did bring me comfort to see we dropped down to like 670 billion dollars on the market cap so you know pretty low um, and it's awesome because it, you can see it wicked right back up and we're back up to 722. So what's amazing about that is while we were sleeping, it dropped down to there and has already, the entire market has been, had roughly an 8% gain from when it tapped on that resistance level. So, you know, we've all been talking about how we think this bull run is about to really continue. You're going to have this one more like blow off top situation everything rages and if that does prove true the 618 through the 702 is very reactive and the 786 i forgot to say that it's, it's the whole three of them um it's very they're very reactive fibonacci levels so a lot of times you'll retrace you'll hit it get slammed back down price rolls over and you know you're on to a whole nother situation um and then the other times you'll get up there you'll tap it maybe tap it twice, three times or something and then rip through it. And then once you get up in this area, you get more into like the start getting into price discovery action when you clear this, which is what we're hoping for. So I have this mapped out just so I know that when the total altcoin market cap gets in this range, I know it's reactionary. None of what I'm about to say is financial advice, but my plan is, is I will take some profits towards the bottom of this and roll them into some sort of stable coin. It'll probably be BUSD or USDC, probably USDC at this point. Um, again, not financial advice. It will not be Tether. Um, I will take some profits just in case we do suffer this massive rejection because just based on our Fibonacci levels here, if we got rejected right here at the bottom of the 618, and let's just say we came you know, back down to the 702. I don't know how likely this is to happen. Or let's just say we come back down to here. Not even really that crazy, right? You would still be at a 20% fall, which could potentially, if we were started to bounce back up, you know, it's another buying opportunity potentially. Um, I, and then even if we continue to really crash and we wound up, you know, going into a bear market or something, you want to have some of those profits preserved so you can buy back in on the way back up and basically multiply the... Uh, the rate at which you're gaining income is how I see it. Uh, enough of that. Um, I'll share that again as things are happening and I'm doing stuff. And I don't know if any of you guys really care about what my strategies are, but I'll tell you anyway. Uh, you can follow me at True Perception 3. I would love it. It's growing pretty fast. I can't wait for my followers to actually pass my following. I don't think that's ever happened for me on any social media platform. And make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Um, you can go check out our playlist section. That's where I, I'm trying to keep everything a little bit more organized so you guys can find stuff. Um, do have the about section. It has this whole thing that I went over the other day. Uh, you can also go through all this. There is a private Facebook group if anybody's interested. It doesn't seem like anybody has jumped on it yet, but we're still open for business. Um, yeah, 
And with that being said, I'm going to have an XRP video dropping later today, and I might try to hop on a Kava testnet competition video with some information for you guys on that in case you want to participate. Um, with that, I'm going to hop off here. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. We're, it's going towards the upside, at least from where it was over the middle of the night. So at least we're not still crashing. See you guys on the next one.